Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to First Clicks, your first click for tech and chill. And obviously we're here to talk about peace of mind, aka sugar and clave. Let's click straight into it. So recently Apple updated their Apple platform security white paper, and it's definitely interesting to take a look at it. because. If you have any of these devices, for example, a recent iPhone, a recent Apple Watch, a recent iPad, recent Mac, a recent Apple TV, it's very important that you know that your files are secure and how this defense mechanism called Secure Enclave is helping us more and more protecting what is ours. So let's start with hardware security. And I quote from the official website, the Secure Enclave is a system on a chip that is included on all recent iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TVs, HomePod devices and on a Mac with Apple Silicon as well as those with Apple T2 secure chip. So this means that if you have any of these recent devices, even if you have an Intel Mac with a T2 chip, you're also enjoying security on the highest level from Apple. The Secure Enclave also provides the foundation for the secure generation of storage of the keys necessary for encrypting data at rest. And it protects and evaluates the biometric data for Touch ID and Face ID. Now this basically means that this unremovable chip, because everything on the motherboard is serialized and if you remove the chip, it won't boot, it won't do anything. It's forcing the system and everything around it to be as secure as possible. So if someone puts a thumb drive in to your Mac and tries to sideload some malware or tries to boot into that drive without uh, you, of course, enabling it first. It will just have a very secure boot into macOS. And after that, if you don't enter your password, if you are not present, if you can't provide the information necessary to make any of these changes, no one will be able to get into your Mac. And this includes, of course, getting into the keys for your encrypted data, touch ID, face ID, and much more. Storage encryption must be fast and efficient. At the same time, it can't expose the data or keying material it uses to establish cryptographic keying relationships. The AEC hardware engine solves this problem by performing a fast inline encryption and decryption as files are written or read. Essentially what this means is that this is going on in real time. So the moment you write something up and save it, it's already encrypted. So no one will be able to touch it unless they have access to your keys. And they won't have access to your keys because of the peace of mind of Secure Enclave. Now, it's very important for us to see all this because this is so important that if someone is able to intercept that data before you encrypt it, there is no point in encrypting it. So it's already encrypted the moment you start typing and the moment you either send it out or save it. Apple has designed Secure Boot to protect the lowest levels of software against tempering and allow it only trusted operating system software from Apple to load at startup. Secure Boot begins in immutable code called Boot ROM, which is laid down during Apple COC, system on a chip fabrication, and is known as the hardware root of trust on Apple Mac computers with a T2 chip. Trust for Mac OS secure boot begins with T2. Now what that means is that the chip itself, the Apple Silicon chip is in full control of the whole boot mechanism. So that means that unless of course you have decided otherwise, there is a hardware root of trust. That means that there is a simple line in which the computer has to stay in to load the proper macOS operating system. Now, obviously, if you have a dual boot into Windows or you have a dual boot uh, on a, a thumb drive and you have enabled that feature, it might have a different set of lines that it can cross, right? But if you do not have any of that stuff enabled, there is a very secure bootload into macOS and there is nothing that can tamper with that. The Secure Enclave also processes fingerprint and face data from Touch ID and Face ID sensors in Apple devices. This provides secure authentication while keeping user biometric data private and secure. It also enables users to benefit from the security of longer and more complex passcodes and passwords with, in many situations, the convenience of swift authentication for access or purchases. Now, obviously this is very important because when you're making a purchase, it also is something that you want to be doing a little bit fast. Uh, you want to be able to pay fast, but also secure. And all that stuff is being handled by that same secure enclave. 
uh, hardware. And the benefit of that happening on device means that no one can tamper with it and is also very secure and fast. Now let's jump to system security. Obviously iOS and macOS. Now, to be honest, um, this also covers everything that stems from iOS. So for example, watchOS, tvOS, um, which is also the OS that is on HomePod, right? I feel like tvOS is also on HomePod, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, anyways, it's all stemming from iOS. So you can trust it has the same level of security as well. Building on unique capabilities of Apple hardware, system security is responsible for controlling access to system resources in Apple devices without compromising usability, system security, and copacity, the boot up process, software updates, and protection of computer system resources such as CPU, memory, disk, software programs, and stored data. So this means that the system simultaneously with the secure enclave is working on securing all the data surrounding the boot up process, software updates, and computer system resources like the CPU memory and stuff that I've said. Now, it's very important that this stuff happens because, well, if people are able to tamper with your hardware, it's like computer resources, uh, like your disk or your uh, memory, it's easier to get into the Mac as well. The most recent versions of Apple operating systems are the most secure. An important part of Apple security is Secure Boot, which protects the system from malware infections at boot time. Secure Boot begins in hardware and builds a chain of trust through software, where each step ensures that the next is functioning properly before handing over control. Now this is definitely also very interesting because this means that the secure enclave before it gives any right or power over to the system it has all the steps checked off and it knows that there is no harm done in its set of tasks and when the system takes over or actually starts helping the secure enclave it knows that all those check marks has been set and it can boot in with that in mind. Subcomponents like the T2 chip and the secure enclave also perform their own secure boot to help ensure they only boot known good code from Apple. The update system can even prevent downgrade attacks so that devices can't be rolled back to an older version of the operating system which an attacker knows how to compromise as a method of stealing user data. Now this is very important because um, if the T2 chip can recognize any altered code or any older code that has been pushed into the boot um, by uh, someone with malicious intent, um, it can check that, verify it, and cut the lags under the boot off. Apple devices also include boot and runtime protections so that they maintain their integrity during ongoing operation. Apple designed silicon on iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, HomePod, and a Mac with Apple Silicon provide a common architecture for protecting operating system integrity. Mac OS also features an expanded and configurable set of protection capabilities in support of its differing computing model, as well as capabilities supported on all Mac hardware platforms. So that is definitely really cool. And I can't wait for Macs to get even more secure over the years with uh, system security and secure enclave. But this is already epic to see. Now let's deep dive into encryption and data protection. The secure boot chain, system security, and app security capabilities all help to verify that only trusted code and apps run on a device. Apple devices have additional encryption features to safeguard user data, even when other parts of the security infrastructure have been compromised. For example, if a device is lost or is running untrusted code. All of these features benefit both the user and IT administrator, protecting personal and corporate information and providing methods for instant and complete remote wipe in the case of a device theft or loss. Now, this is very interesting, especially for people that have uh, their own company or work at a very large comp corporation <laughs> and have sensitive data on their device. If something is compromised, if someone actually has uh, hacked your device or uh, if you lose if you lost the device someone stole it from you you can actually remotely wipe the entire device the moment it uh, powers itself up again and it's done there is no use for that device other than handing it back over to the authorities because it will also have an iCloud lock and <laughs> these are near impossible to get through as the FBI Besides using data protection and file vault to prevent unauthorized access to data, Apple operating system kernels 
and force protecting and security. The kernel uses access controls to sandbox apps, which restricts what data an app can access, and a mechanism called data fault, which rather than restricting the calls an app can make, restricts the access the data of an app from all other requesting apps. Now, this is definitely interesting because if one app, for example, is corrupted, it is sandbox, and it cannot corrupt any other apps on the Mac as well, uh, or your iPhone or iPad, because it's all sandboxed in. It's practically an isolated issue. <laughs> now, if you want to read anything about this in your own time, and read the entire white paper that they have released, you can definitely go to the first click in the description that will get you through this official page from Apple and you can read it in your own time. Now there are two more subjects like app security and services security, which are both very important, but we have already handled a bunch of information today. We will probably revisit uh, this page later for those two subjects. Guys, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Uh, we did. Uh, I, I feel like it's really important for us that our data is secure. And even though we have a bunch of people fighting against it, for example, uh, Tim Sweeney from Epic Games, it is very, very important that this happens and that this trend continues. Because trust me, if data is the new oil, which it's kind of looking to be like that, right? I mean, most oil companies officially <laughs> aren't making as much money as these tech companies uh, on your data. Um, so if data is the new oil, then trust me, your devices are the new Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and Saudi Arabia is beautiful. And so are your devices. But what they also have in common is that they both deserve to be secure, safe, and have peace of mind. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Leave a like on this video, give us some of your feedback, and definitely subscribe because there is a lot more coming through this channel and we can't wait to share it with you. For now, I hope you guys obviously click on. Thank you.